Hey YouTube, what's going on? It's Patrick here at VectorVest, and today we're going to be taking a look at two completely different stocks that look almost identical based off the charts. That's right, we're going to be taking a look at both AMC and GME here today, and using a little hidden gem inside of the VectorVest graph settings, which is called the performance graphs. This will allow us to put them next to each other and really get a clear understanding of how in sync these stocks really are because I've seen a lot of people talking about the two stocks and how they trade in tandem, but when you can put them side by side and you can take a look at them based off percentages, things become even more clear. At the end, we'll also take a look at how this could even be possible, theorize a few possible ways these stocks could be trading the way they are, but for now, hit that like button, subscribe, and let's get into it. <laughs> All right, so now that we're back, we're starting off right on the VectorVest 7 homepage. So for any VectorVest subscribers out there, I'm gonna walk you through how to get exactly to this hidden gem. So first and foremost, you start off by going to the graphs tab at the very top, open up a new graph, and then click on the word stock in the upper left and select the performance graphs. Once it comes up, it'll automatically default with the look of the VectorVest composite, the overall index that we use to track the market, but then in the upper right, you can just go ahead and type in your symbols. So we'll put in AMC and then GME and just hit enter, take them off. And as you can see right now, it's defaulted to a six month time frame. So basically starting from the beginning of February, we're gonna push this back to the beginning of January. So we'll just go change the date back to January 4th, keep it as of today's date, August 9th. And now what the performance graph is doing is something unique that you really can't find anywhere else. It's not just putting on the chart or a candlestick chart on top of one another. It's actually starting it based off percentages. So over here at the very bottom left corner, you have 0% gain or loss. And then as they move, they're shown in percent gain or loss from the initial starting point and not just on a daily candle pattern like you're typically used to seeing. This allows you to really understand which stock, if you're looking at a basket of stocks, is leading the charge or which one's the best performer, hence the performance graph, and really allows you to quickly identify which stock may be most suitable for you, or if you're following a trading plan that you know is going off of buying or staying in the fastest horse at any given time, this will allow you to quickly identify which horse that is and which one your money should be going into at the time. All right, so let's just go ahead, change one of these colors up a little bit. We'll make AMC, we'll change the style to a different color because they're very similar. So we'll change it to a green color real fast. And so now we've got AMC shown in green and then the pinkish color line is going to be the GME line. So as we know, right out of the gate, GME had the biggest explosive move running into the end of January, which we can clearly see here. But if you look at AMC, AMC didn't have quite the move, but still moved very, very similarly in the sense that if we use the crosshair cursors, we both had a peak here on the 27th of January, pulled back the next day, had a low, came up and hit a second top, not a double top, but a lower high here on the 29th and then took a little bit of a breather. And then all of a sudden, right around the end of February, started seeing a little bit of a pop coming into the beginning of March. Well, that run up continued until the 10th or so of March. And this is where things start to get a little bit separated. You can see GME peaked on the 10th of March, but if we look at AMC, AMC continued to climb and was actually tracking a few days behind it, then on the 15th of March is when it finally hit that high. But then as we all know, they had that little bit of a break or pause there for a while. Both stocks moved sideways, both at different price points. But then all of a sudden, we saw both of them starting to run up towards the end of May. And as we know, AMC had a huge run going into May, going into that $70 range. GME also had a bigger run, but AMC, had the bigger percentage run at that time. Well, now all of a sudden things start to get a little weird again. Things start to sink right back up. The change may be different, but the pattern is identical here. 
So as we can see, they both peaked on the 2nd of June, ran up, pull, or pulled back, ran up again. This time, GME hit a new high at that point. AMC hit a lower high on the 9th of June, which is when GME had their earnings announcement. But then that's when things start to get a little bit different again, start to separate, if you will, where GME continues to just pull back and slide lower slowly but surely. Whereas if we look at AMC, AMC held those levels, teetered sideways for a bit right after that big run up. But overall, same similar pattern, continuing to move lower, pulling back from those all time highs there. Except for this section from the 10th of June until about the beginning of July, everything looks almost identical. You have the same peaks, maybe a couple of days off, but very, very close, same bottoms, uh, same troughs, if you will, but very, very similar chart patterns. Now, this is kind of interesting and brings a question of how could this possibly be? You know, there's been a lot of speculation on there and how two stocks from two different areas of the market could be trading in tandem. Originally, people were thinking that, you know, because these stocks were both in the small caps, that that could be how is the short traders are utilizing these ETFs, which could be moving these stocks together. Well, as time progresses, these stocks are becoming more and more different. For example, as we all know, GameStop is now in the Russell 1000. And AMC is now, I believe, the largest holding in the Russell 2000. Also, GameStop is now in the S&P 400 mid caps, which AMC is not. So as time is progressing, because of this market cap on both of these stocks, they're starting to diverge. They're in two different areas of the market, with GameStop coming from the retail sector or industry and AMC coming from the leisure industry. So two very, very different areas in the market, two different categories in the market, but yet trading very similarly. So going back to theorizing, we talked about the ETFs. Now that they're starting to become different, they're in two different categories or even in different classifications based on market cap. There's no way the ETFs could be the only thing to blame now at this point. So a lot of people have now suggested that an algorithm, a specific algorithm is trading these stocks in tandem. That could be very, very true. But one of the other ideas that could also be happening with these two stocks, and it's something that I'm starting to see more and more of as of late, are people are theorizing about derivatives. You know, we all know 2007, 2008, the mortgage-backed security swaps that they were doing that blew up the whole U.S. economy and the global economy for a few years. Well, the same kind of swaps can also be used for stocks as well. So let's go ahead and jump right into it here. And I found CDOs or collateralized debt obligations. Basically what they are is their securities or stocks or loans or certain assets basically that are piled together or bundled together, if you will, and sold as a package deal to institutions or to other big hedge funds or other institutional investors. They're a derivative because the price is derived from another underlying asset or a bundle of assets or a bundle of stocks, for example. If it is a security swap or it is a collateralized debt obligation, one of the big questions that I have right now is what other stocks are in this quote unquote bundle or this pool of assets? So what I'm gonna be doing here, if you guys enjoy today's video, I'm gonna be doing an update coming out on Friday where I'm gonna do some investigating, do some more digging out there and try to find all the stocks that exhibit almost identical chart patterns that we're seeing with GME and AMC. Because most likely it's more than just these two stocks. So if you guys like today's video, don't forget, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed, and make sure to turn on the notifications so that way you get the update for when our six o'clock video comes out on Friday, where I'm gonna be taking a look at not only these two, but I'm gonna be trying to build upon this list and coming out with a master list of stocks that are trading almost identically. So once again, thank you for tuning in today and I'll see y'all on the moon.